What's in this box will save you five to 10 G's on this bad boy. If you're a homeowner thinking about renewable energy and energy storage, it'll save you money there too, and quite a bit. And if your lights have been flickering every time your heat pump or AC kicks on, it will prevent that as well. Hey, it's Joel Walsman, CEO and Master Electrician of Jefferson Electric. This video is brought to you by Smooth Starter. See, I've been mistaken about what's in this box. I had the opportunity to speak with Smooth Starter's chief engineer, and I found out a couple of things. Let's check it out, and I'm gonna share with you the conversation we had. Here it goes. So Jason, the question I have is, Smooth Starter, is it compatible with the 230 volt AC applications? regardless of whether it's an off-grid hunting cabin or a recreational vehicle. If, if those are the electrical parameters, this smooth starter is suitable to the application. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. 208 to 30 volt applications, correct, yeah. 50, 60 hertz. Let's open this Pandora's box and see what's inside. It's like a mounting plate, instruction manual, oh, a little bit of a wiring harness with pre terminated ends. Thank you, Smooth Starter. And this is where the magic happens, right there. And there's my plug. Oh, oh, so beautiful. Plug and play. So this is a soft start kit by Smooth Starter. It is not a hard start kit, and it is designed for the longevity and performance of your heat pump or air conditioner. So Jason, <laughs> you're an expert in this area. Hard start, soft start, smooth start, is it all the same thing? Are we talking about one and the same? My AC unit is big, complex, and I don't want to have to replace it. The lights dim, they, they flicker a little bit when things kick on. How do I solve the problem? All right, so, so definitely no, it's it's different. So if we compare hard start to smooth start, they are two different uh, things. Yeah, the, the hard start kit, the way it works is that that relay will only disengage the start capacitor if the voltage picks up two more then the pickup voltage of that relay, which is typically around 180 volt, i.e. also the start capacitor will stay longer in the circuit, and you risk having a very short lifetime or an immediate failure of that uh, start capacitor. The smooth starter always knows when it is the right time to disengage that capacitor. It has a learning function. Smooth starter provides a fantastic schematic. It's just a single page with a beautiful pictorial and a step-by-step -step wiring diagram at the bottom. Well done, Smooth Starter. Let's see if we can get this right, first pass. Two screws and a 5 16 and your wiring compartment is open. Before you do any work, make sure you turn off the disconnect. That's this baby right here. I'm gonna remove this cable tie to make room for the Smooth Starter in here. There we go. So this Smooth Starter is made for all 230 volts AC heat pumps, single phase. You'll see mine's running 253.1. That's a little bit hot, but still within the workable range. 230 is a nominal voltage. So always worth a curious check. Now let's see the AC kick on and watch the inrush current because that's what the smooth starter is all about. There it goes. All right, so that's what you call startup current. We're gonna have an oscilloscope on the next one. You can see how it starts higher and then it drops down lower once it starts running smoothly here. It's coming back down, coming back down. You do definitely want to select your smooth starter to be compatible with the size of your air conditioner or heat pump. We'll get into that in a little bit more detail. Very, very simple. And, uh, and typically, the best way to do so is, is by having the locked rotor amps and rated load amps of the of the heat pump or air conditioning unit, which is typically available on the on the nameplate of the of the unit, because there are two sizes of the smooth starter. And the reason for having the two sizes, um, one of them is up to 16 amp, and the other one is up to 32 amp. And the reason for having the two sizes is because the main difference between the two models is the internal start capacitor. Now, the internal start capacitor is responsible for giving that extra torque during the, the starting of the, of the compressor. But if you give too much torque, so if you have a too large start capacitor, 
you risk still having uh, what we call over torquing, which means that it is a rapid buildup of voltage on the capacitor, causing that capacitor to disengage too, too early. So it will not result in the best possible current reduction, which is why the smooth starter is really used. All right, now that we know it's running, let's pull the plug. Boom, shuts off. Okay, let's get to work, put this smooth starter in. Remember, there is a ton of juice in these things. Always de-energize the circuit and double check it before working on the unit. It really is a jumble of wires. However, just take it one step at a time. Unscrew the terminal T2 on the contactor. There it is. It's very detailed. Cut and strip the wire. So I'm gonna pull that off. Whoop, there it goes. That screw will go back in for now. We don't lose it. This is the wire we cut and strip. Got it, got it. Cut off the stay con. Strip it to a half inch. Okay. Make sure you didn't nick any of the little wire strands. You want a good clean strip so there's no damage. Connect this wire to the R terminal on the smooth starter. Careful to get all the strands in the terminal. Number two Phillips does a nice job snugging that down. These feel like high quality terminals. Little wiggle seat. Followed by a tug test. Oh, solid, super solid. The black wire supplied goes from terminal C on the smooth starter, fit very nicely, down to the fast on connection on T1 of the contactor. Little wiggle seat, wiggle seat, and there it is. Always give it a tug test and a visual inspection. Looks good. Step three, 10 gauge wire from the smooth starter as defined, down to T2 on the contactor. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. You don't want to over torque, don't want to under torque. Nice fit. Always a tug test. Well done. Step four, blue wire from the S terminal on the smooth starter to the H perm terminal on the run capacitor. That's this booger right here. And one thing I had to phone a friend to find out, he's in HVAC. I could not see the herm marked. It's engraved on the top. It was covered in dust. I don't know if I ever would have found it. Thank you so much, buddy. Additionally, remove the other conductor that's not going to the compressor start terminal. Just pull that out of the way. All right, supplied brown wire with a nice fast on connector to the run capacitor terminal C, also engraved on the top. Look carefully for it. And that comes over to the smooth starter RC terminal. Again, the visual instructions, step by step, very clear. These fast ons can be pretty tight. You can use a screwdriver to provide a little leverage. Remove the existing wire that's going to the T2 and any other wires. You'll only have one wire on terminal C of the run capacitor. We have made all the connections. We've tug tested everything. We've visual inspected everything here at the smooth starter and in the unit before I mount the smooth starter with the great mounting kit inside the unit right here. And I'm gonna be real careful that I don't penetrate anything. I've checked behind this mounting plate and there's a cavity and I'm using short self tappers. So I'm gonna secure mounting plate in here. Again, once I'm confident that this is gonna kick on and I've done it all right. So let's test it out. Yes! Wow! Let's give it a sec. Sounds like it's purring like a kitten. You guys smell something burning? Just kidding. Beautiful. That's it. You can see I was kind of set up here. I had all my tools, I had a heat gun, I had some Staycon shrink, heat shrink, I had the paper instructions out of the box, I had my computer for backups, for research, and it wasn't hard 
at all. Each terminal on the run capacitor and all the terminals are marked on top. That's the only secret here. The carrier brand was a real simple and straightforward installation. We'll have another one come in your direction in case your brand differs. And I have to say, I didn't need anything but one number two Phillips screwdriver, a pair of cutter strippers, and the 5 sixteenths to remove the cover. And it's gonna be a wrap. Subscribe to Electric Pro Academy for real skills to make real money.